If you'll focus on your porch and you'll worry about sweeping your porch, it's about like Texas out here. You got heard of that in the morning, you sweep the porch off. The way it blows around here, man, it's going to be dirty by the evening. Focus on sweeping that thing off in the mornings and evenings. Maybe even at night, you ain't got to worry about your neighbors too much. Problem is, my Christians, they don't look at their own sin, they look at everybody else's. And it causes divisions. things that happen in life is because of the stuff we put in our heads and stuff that we're putting in our heart. We're going to see that tonight. I'm going to give you this thought and we're going to go home, but uh, we're in second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to read verses 10 through, uh, 10 through 17 and then I'm going to preach, all right? Verse number 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, right there, he's writing to the church. Now I want you to go ahead and understand, this ain't to the lost man, this ain't to some foreign field. He's writing to the church that he had Established. Somebody say amen, all right? Now, I may be sick, I may have shingles, I may be on medicine tonight, but I'm still going to give you every bit I have. Amen. Amen. All right, because you need it. I don't want you to fall asleep. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, somebody help me, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For if I have... For it hath been declared unto me, my brethren, there's that word again, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for me? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you. Mm, 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 mm. We're going to see something right here. But Crispus... And Gaius, look at this, lest any should uh, say that I have baptized in my own name, I baptize also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any others, for Christ sent me not to baptize. Woo! That squashes the church of Christ down the road saying you got to be baptized to be saved. Amen. Yeah. Just going to go ahead and say it for everybody out there. Baptism won't, never has, can save you. Or unless the Word of God is a lie. We know the Word of God can't lie because the Word of God is God's Word. But to preach the gospel not, of, not with wisdoms of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Mm. On June 16th, 1858, at the Illinois Republican Convention in Springfield, Abraham Lincoln kicked off his bid for the U.S. Senate with a speech that would be, come to be known as the House Divided Speech. The speech was given that the federal government had the power to end slavery and the House was divided. Our nation was divided. And it wasn't long after that the Civil War broke out against the North and the South. The North didn't want to have slavery, but the South did. Eventually, Abraham Lincoln would become our 16th president. And he would eventually bring the Civil War to an end. And slavery in America would be an end in America. But, let me see, hang on, hang on, hang on, guys. But before Abraham Lincoln gave his speech, our Bible records the nation of Israel going into a civil war against each other, the northern kingdoms and the southern kingdoms, because they were divided. Our Lord and Savior said in Mark chapter number 3 and verse 25, says this, And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. You know the old saying, history repeats itself, and if a division was in the early church, it can happen to the church now in 2021. I want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 verses 10 through 17 with this thought and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand tonight I want to see four evaluations that I discovered about this church in Corinth and I want you to look at yourself tonight and I want you to see and find yourself and look and see if you've been guilty like this church of causing any vision in a church whether here Recently, before, or maybe in the future. Now tonight, let me go ahead and help you right quick. We are preaching through Corinthians. So I'm going to be preaching on subjects. And every subject, nothing other than doesn't mean it's going on in church. And right now, I don't know of any divisions going on in church. Right now, I don't know of any contentions going on in church. Somebody say amen. amen. So what I'm trying to prevent is something in the future. Hey, amen, preacher. Tonight, I want to look at if a house be divided against itself, 
that house cannot stand. The reason why we got 952,762.999% churches out there, Baptist churches, because this guy, this guy, and this guy couldn't agree with this guy, so those guys went out and started churches. Say amen. Yeah. And not every church that's got a church on the sign is a church that worships God. And I'm going to help you with something else. Not every church that says Baptist out there believes like they should. Tonight, real quick, I've got to give you everything i got because my voice is going to be gone, my brain's probably already fried, and I've got to give you what the Word of God has to say. Amen. I want you to notice with me four evaluations on a house be divided against itself. It cannot stand. I want you to notice number one, the causes for a house divided. Verse 10, their relationship. Verse 10 says this, Now I beseech you, brethren, Jesus said it like this, By your love for one another, the world will know, everybody will know, everybody you know, everybody they know, everybody that knows, knows will say that you are my disciple. What I'm trying to say tonight is this, the reason why we are brethren ain't because we look alike, ain't because we smell alike, ain't because we sin alike, ain't because we wear the same clothes. It's because you and I have been washed by the blood by Jesus. That same blood makes me and you have a same father. Just because I'm the best looking brother you got tonight. <laughs> Me and you are brothers and brethren because of Jesus Christ. Me and you have a Father in heaven tonight because of Him. Not because you got saved. Well, because you did get saved. Not because you filled out a membership church to be a member in Country Baptist Church. This is where brethren, though. I put the relationship. The first time brethren is mentioned, put the passage up, is in Genesis chapter 13. Verse number 8. In Genesis chapter number 13, you had Abraham and Lot. How many remember Abraham and Lot? Abraham and Lot. Abraham was Lot's uncle. God had told him to leave his whole family. He didn't. He drug his nephew because he had compassion on him, but he still done it. God didn't tell him to. So what happens is Abraham becomes very wealthy. Lot becomes very wealthy. And they become strife between the two. And there became division. Look what it says. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between thy, my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be... So they separated. Division. Division will ruin your marriage. Division will ruin your kids. Ask a, ask a kid whose father stayed on the road their whole life and they never, they never raised them. They have no relationship with them. Think about all these people that are running around trying to make dollar bills and provide for their family. They're providing for them, but they ain't going to have no children when they get 18. They ain't going to have a relationship with them. Be careful. I'm going to help you with something, and I'm going to be very transparent with you. I make way less money now than I did in Georgia, and I looked at my bank account last night because I kept checking for that stimulus. Amen. <laughs> I have more money in my savings account right now at a $40,000 pay cut with more bills than I did in Georgia because I'm honoring God with every bit of my finances. You're going out trying to make all this money provide, all you're doing is getting debt and you're getting bit. We are the same fake finance. And what I'm trying to say is you're going to work yourself to death and never have anything and your kids ain't going to have, know who you are. You can make less money if you honor God and you be like we learn and you honor God, your kids will also honor God and they'll see all that and you'll have a relationship. Life's about relationships, guys. The word at church we learn means assembly. It don't mean the four walls in this building. Right. These churches out there that got way better building, I'm going to tell you right now, they do a ride by them, I see them all the time. I'm thinking, man, I'm trying to preach the word. Why? Oh, come on, Lord, this, a, this sanctuary from the 30s. we taking good care of it. Everything we got around, we've taken good care of it. We fixed it up. I ain't saying nothing negative, but there's a lot of churches out here that got better facilities. They got better uh, uh, playground. They got better everything. But one thing they might not have is the unity we got. And I'll go ahead and tell you right now, they ain't got no redneck from South Georgia that will preach that Bible word upon word and give you everything you got, whether you like it or not. I'm just telling you, we are brethren tonight because of who our daddy is. And daddy don't like you being mean to his children. And daddy don't like it when you ain't happy with other of his children. Amen. We'll see. We'll see. But that word, I just thought I'd give you all that nugget, was first mentioned in... Uh, Genesis 13, with strife and division. Same way here. Not only their relationship, but their rubbish. Verse 10 says this, By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. Okay? I'm going to help you with something tonight. A new Christian ain't going to know what some of us older Christians know. All right? But I expect some of you older Christians to know what the Word of God says. 
Most of visions are called because somebody says, well, I just don't believe that like that. Come on. Or, oh, the best one I like. Preacher, I didn't interpret it like that. I'm going to help you with something about interpretation of the Bible. There's one interpretation of the Scripture and many applications. I had a man here who got plumb red mad at me in the face because he didn't know, he didn't believe in some doctrine around here, and he didn't know how to study his Bible. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. He ain't here anymore. Praise God. Amen. He gone. <laughs> I can't stand it. I can't stand it. People are so smart they can't even understand Bible. But problem is, is the problem is, is so many people that say, "Well, I'm a part of that church, but I don't really, I don't really agree with the pastor on this. I don't really agree like that." Bible says we supposed to speak the same thing. Mm. I wonder how many churches have been having division over who voted for who for president. Now we know if somebody voted for Biden, they wrong. We know they wrong. They shouldn't have voted for him. Y'all laughing, but you can't say you're a Christian and vote for somebody that supports abortion, who supports all these things and, and all this. I didn't vote for Donald Trump because I hung out with him and had, uh, and had all the best time of my life golfing. I'll never meet the guy. I voted for him because of everything he stood for. That's why. And you know what? It is what it is. God, The Bible says that God puts kings and governors up. So, And guess what? The cool thing about it is, I ain't one time went on Facebook and run my math about Biden. You know why? I got to respect him. He's my... Until it comes against this. Yes. What you trying to say? Be careful what you say on Facebook about all these people that are in authority above you. You're supposed to be praying for them. Yes. And I'm going to help you with something else. The stuff you put on social media is going to make somebody not want to come to this church. If you think he's an idiot, don't tell everybody he's an idiot. Just think it and not say nothing. And the Bible is very clear that you better not call nobody a fool or an idiot. It's the Bible, man. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Just because you don't agree with them, it doesn't matter. But you still got to honor them until they start doing things against the Word of God. They ain't going to tell us to shut this church down again. Amen. It ain't called rebellion, but it's called we're going to meet like the early church in secret. Whatever we got to do. Because God's commandment says for us to meet. Y'all getting mad already. <laughs> speak the same thing. We all supposed to speak the same thing, guys. Does that, mean you, does that mean some of you older saints means that, that a new Christian is going to learn how to go overcome cussing right away? No. But when's the last time you took them on your wing and showed them what it means to be a Christian? There's a lot of talk around here and not a lot of walking. Come on. A lot of talk about how we'll do something with somebody, but there's not a lot of walking. Come on. That's why God's told me to do discipleship in Sunday school. I got to get it started because a lot of people ain't doing, they're doing a lot of talking how they want to help these Christians, but they ain't doing no walking and taking time. Mm, 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 preaching tonight. Amen. Amen. I would never preach this on a Sunday morning. We'd never have a visitor again. <laughs> they're, they're rubbish. Mm, 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 mm. The recklessness. Verse 10 says this, Say, uh, and that there be no divisions among you. The word division here is the Greek word where we get the English word for schism. It means to tear or rend. So basically the saying it like this. Stop ripping and tearing each other up. You send me to a church. If God was to ever call me out of this church, Lord, I hope not. If he was ever send me to another little church to revitalize it, the first thing I'm going to walk in is I'm going I'm to just observe because more than likely the reason why the church is not growing is because of division. You cannot be right with God. Hey, Lorena, how you doing? Good to see you. My nice stress. <laughs> Hoochie. I can't believe she dressed like that in church. <laughs> I've heard it in this church. I've heard it out of some people's mouths in this church how bad you'll talk about somebody in the church. How bad will you talk about them outside the church? It got quiet, didn't it? I'm just saying it like it is. If you'll run your mouth about me in church, good gosh, what would you say about them outside of church? But I've heard it. I've heard it. That, you, right there, you just show me. You car knows all get up. Show you the proper way. Hey, Lorena. Hey, girl, come on. Let's go to the altar. Hey, girl, I don't really like what you're wearing. You're revealing something. Let's, let's go change. You see what I'm saying? How, you know, you, you, you show them love and say, hey, I, I really don't like... I don't think what you're wearing is appropriate. She ain't never done that. I'm giving her an example. You see what I'm saying? You tell somebody in this church, I don't know what you're wearing, or oh, girl, why? you need to go get and put some more clothes on. They ain't never going to come back to this church. Right. It's going to cause division. When you take them on your arm, you say, 
hey, I'm going to take you to TJ Maxx. We're going to buy you some clothes. Amen. It's amazing. All these people, they, all kinds of people that cause division, all they do is talk. No walking. All they do is talk, run their mouth. Ain't no fruit because they don't do anything. Once again, y'all don't get mad because I said I don't think there's nothing like that going in the church right now. I'm trying to prevent it in the future. You'll never, you'll never do nothing for Jesus Christ running your mouth about the brethren. Matter of fact, he may kill you. I'm telling you, you better be careful how you talk about the man of God, other man of God, other women of God, your Sunday school teacher, you better, your youth pastor, you better very, be very careful how you talk about God's children, whether they preach, teach, whatever the case might be. God ain't going to put up with it. Mm. Say, I love you, preacher. Amen. I will not. If I find out about something going on in church, I will not allow it to happen. I will cause, I will stop it as fast as it started. Why? Because if we don't have unity, we ain't got nothing. And these big churches out there that are pfft, reckless, they look, they big and all that, but they just, they tearing each other down. Ain't, God ain't even moving. Come with me, I'll take you to a few of them. Amen. They're relying, verse 10, says this, but ye be perfectly joined together. Look at that again. In the same mind and in the same judgment. Somebody help me. If you'll focus on your porch and you'll worry about sweeping your porch. It's about like Texas out here. You got air today in the morning, you sweep the porch off. The way it blows around here, man, it's going to be dirty by the evening. You focus on sweeping that thing off in the mornings and the evenings and maybe even at night and you ain't got to worry about your neighbors too much. Problem is, my Christians, they don't look at their own sin. They look at everybody else's, and it causes divisions. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. By the renewing of your mind, if you are not in this daily, not weekly, not monthly, if you are not in this daily, eating on it, you're going to be carnal as the day long. You're not going to be spiritual. That mind that you need is Jesus, and He's the Word. You've got to get it in here Amen. and in here. Look, uh, he said it like this. The psalmist said it like this. Uh, thy word have I hidden in thy heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Amen. Y'all still love me? Amen. I mean, I, I'm preaching Bible. This ain't Dr. Phil. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been part of causing division in a church? Have you? been part of causing division in a church before or after or now or in the future. If you have, get, you can get it forgiven. If you have it, don't ever let it happen. Amen. 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 Number two, I want you to notice with me the courage for a house divided. Verse 11. Now this one's going to step on your toes. All right, the witness, verse 11 says this, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren. Paul wasn't even here. He was in Ephesus. Somebody told him about the things that were going on in the church. He was very concerned because he had started that church. Let me help you with something. I ain't starting this church. This church was started in the 60s. It's had many preachers. It's done a million things over the years. But guess what? I ain't worried about what happened before I got here. Let me help you with something. I ain't going to worry about it after I'm gone one day. I got to worry about it. Here and now. And what I'm trying to say tonight is this. I'm very concerned what goes on in this church and outside of this church as a pastor. That's why I got shingles. <laughs> Worried about all y'all. Amen. But I do appreciate your prayers. Amen. The witnessing, the witness. This is good. Says by them which are the house of Chloe. Chloe? Who this? We don't really know. She's only mentioned one time in the New Testament. But I'm going to tell you what she was. She wasn't this person. Preacher. Now, this, now all this stuff going on now, you know. Preach all this going on, this going on now. You got to handle it. No. She told them to tell Paul. Paul sends a letter back, and she even said, I said it. You can tell him I said it because I'm tired of this mess because I'm concerned what's going on in my church. Somebody say amen. amen. If you are willing to stand up or do something or tell to somebody about something that's going on in church that's sin, you need to put your name behind it. Ooh. If you see something going on in the church and it's causing you to be grieved, you need to deal with it or get somebody that can and be able to say, oh, not a, no, preacher, I don't have anything to do with it. Yeah, unanimous. Yeah. 
No, 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 no. Because that tells me right then you're probably part of it. Had a man in this church. He ain't been here in a while. He may show back up. I don't know. He may, he may not. I don't really, I really don't know if he will or not. But I remember one time he came to me and said, Rita, all these people are saying this. I looked at him and I'm like, there's only like 10 of y'all here. Who's all these people? Come on. <laughs> and right then I already knew, ain't all these people saying nothing. It's you. You saying something. And I looked him right in the eyes. I said, hmm, okay. He said, you ain't concerned? I said, no, I really ain't. If they don't like it, well, that's what that preacher, that's what it is. They don't really like you saying, you know, if you don't like it here, find another church. Well, why would I want, I said, I said hey, man, why would I want somebody here if they don't want to be here? Yep. I mean, all they're going to do is cause division, kind of like what you're trying to do. That's what I told him. <laughs> and it ain't because it... Do you think I really want to see somebody leave this church? If you don't know me good enough to, to really think I want to see somebody leave this church, then you don't know your pastor very good. I don't want to ever see anybody leave this church. But I go ahead and tell you right now, I don't want to see anybody here that's going to cause us issues. And I sure don't want to see somebody here that don't want to be a part of this thing. Why would you want it? Would you want them living with you? They didn't like you and was like, I'm going to sleep at your house. I'm going to eat your food. I'm going to do all this. I'm going to tell you how to pay your bills even though I'm not going to tithe. Come on. <laughs> hey, you'll realize the ones that talk about money and don't like the way money being spent, you do a research on them. Most of the time they ain't giving nothing to the church. Amen. I had to learn that as a young pastor too. But I'm just saying, this lady told them the problems was going on. She says, you tell them I said it because I'm tired of it. It's messed up. What was going on? There was divisions. There was incest going on. There was drunkenness going on. I say it was messed up. Mm. That there be no contentions. What's that word mean, preacher? I think I got it right here for us. Contentions among you. That word means strifes and debates. You and I ain't supposed to be having strife or debates or any of that mess. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you see an issue with somebody in the church and you can't handle it, I'm going to tell you the problem you don't need to do is go to somebody else that can't handle it. You just gossiped. And when you tell one person, they're going to accidentally slip up and tell another and then another and then another and it's kind of like this coronavirus. We all coughed on each other. We all got it. They all going to know about it too. What you do is you go to the one that can handle it or you handle it yourself. Not being mean tonight, guys. This stuff ain't being preached in churches anymore. It's not. It's not being preached in churches. I'm telling you, you go to a church that's not doing anything for God, you'll see there's divisions. We're quickly division. Do you have enough courage like Chloe tonight to stand up for what's right, but also put your name on it and not be ashamed of it? Amen. Number three. The congregation for a house divided. Now, this one's pretty good too. I want you to see the debating. Verse number 12 says, Now this I say, every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of uh, Cephas, and I am of Christ. I want you to see the debating. This one guy would say, I'm of Paul. This other guy was, be, was saying, I'm Cephas. This other guy was saying, I'm of Apollos. And then some were saying, I'm of Christ. They were all wrong. They were all wrong. They were all trying to get to a click. They were all trying to do this. They were all trying to be connected to somebody else besides the main man, and that is Jesus Christ. I noticed the debate. I'm of who, I'm of this, I'm of that, blah, blah, blah. Let me help you something. Tonight, you ain't here because of me. I ain't your spiritual link for your salvation. Yes, God has put me here to do a work, but I, you have to have your own relationship with God tonight, not through the preacher. I ain't supposed to be put on no pedestal. Now, y'all supposed to take care of the preacher. That's not what I'm talking about. But you, you ain't supposed to put the messenger up before the message is what I'm saying. If you walk out of here and you bragging on Brother Johnson did the best sermon I've ever seen in your life, then you missed the point. Jesus is the one supposed to be preaching every week and week out. Amen. I think that's... Thank, thank you. I think that's why so many people leave church. Because they get their emphasis on the man instead of the master. Right. And when the man, me, lets you down because I didn't call you back in time or text you back in time or I wasn't there or I didn't say the right thing to you, you focus too much on the man instead of the master. 